Monster Hunter Wilds is a game on PC where I am genuinely confused at the performance for the visual quality that I am seeing on screen. This is true on a high spec PC, but it is crucially the case on a lower spec PC where on first contact, I genuinely cannot advise buying this game if you're on a lower end GPU or a GPU with eight gigabytes of VRAM. Surface level impressions though, when loading up the game for the first time seemed positive. There is a long shader pre-compilation step which took around 6 minutes on a 9800X3D and more than 13 minutes on a Ryzen 5 3600. I had a similar positive impression when looking in the graphical menu. I saw a lot of options here to control things in a fine grain way with a VRAM meter, preview images for a number of the options, and even little pips which tell you which aspect of your PC is most affected by the option in question, so CPU, GPU, or VRAM. Those things seemed nice on the surface, but another surface level thing gave me pause when I launched the game. On the first start, the game insists that you turn on frame generation before it even starts with this pop-up. This is the case, even though the developers have no clue about your performance level that you can actually muster in the game. As a reminder, Nvidia or AMD would never advise you to use frame generation with low base frame rates like 30 FPS as it usually produces poor experiences. Yet this pop-up there shows that the developers are saying, turn it on regardless of actual performance. That is definitely bad design. If you click no here, the game further insists that you can turn it on in the options menu, reminding you again. Whatever their intent is here, to me as a tech reviewer, this insistence paints a poor potential picture for the game's base performance. After all the pop-ups, I played like any other casual user, and I used the game's default settings that it detected, and set DLSS to balanced mode at 1440p on an RTX 4060, and started my adventure. I immediately could tell though that something was just not right. Without even mentioning performance, I could see that the textures in the game were confusingly poor. So many shots had textures like this that were just bafflingly low resolution. I really think this almost looks PS3 level here. And some of the textures like this character's coat, even though it's directly in front of the camera, look straight up wrong. I presume the coat here is supposed to be white color, but the poorly configured texture compression maybe has made it into a multicolored one with obvious mosaic artifacting. When I finally got character control after the long-winded intro, I was greeted by big stutters each and every time I turned the camera while using the RTX 4060 at the default high settings at 1440p DLSS balance mode. Along with the stutters, it is quite easy to see how textures were taking a while to load in after each camera turn. So it looked bad and ran bad on the default high settings with no ray tracing on. As a reminder, these are the settings that the game defaulted to after detecting my hardware. Having tested PC games for so long, I know such strange frame time behavior when turning the camera can often have to do with aspects of streaming things into VRAM sometimes textures. With that learned experience in mind, I went into the menu to tweak things down when I saw another thing which gave me pause again. The game's high textures, which look poor as I just showed, are definitely not the highest at least. The highest require a separate DLC download that will come out when the game is released on release day. So at least there is a potentially better visual experience for those with more GPU memory. The issue with this though is that looking in the menu at this VRAM meter here, it wasn't showing me any sort of warning or telling me that VRAM was in fact an issue. It was showing everything healthily below the yellow and red bars. So the VRAM meter and the game itself thinks everything should be fine at the settings it defaulted to. Yet just moving the camera is causing big stutters and the textures are very poor with obvious pop-in. The high textures in Monster Hunter Wilds don't just look poor because I was playing the game on an 8GB GPU. Even loading up the game on an RTX 4070 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM shows that the high textures are just the same. They're just poor looking overall. All the quality issues are there that I saw on an RTX 4060 with 8 gigabytes. Still, I'm a performance reviewer, so I know what I am doing. Tweaking down the texture settings to medium got rid of the stutters while turning the camera on the RTX 4060 at least, but that revealed two other big issues with the game's technical quality. One was that the medium textures are just awful anywhere you look. To avoid stuttering on an 8GB GPU, you have to essentially downgrade textures to look more like something you'd see in a game from the early 2000s. 
Seriously, just look at these textures. I'm kind of at awe that this is the texture quality required to make an 8GB GPU not stutter in what is essentially an empty desert filled with repeating tiled textures for sand. The other thing that I saw here at medium texture quality was performance related. Although the game was no longer stuttering when I turned the camera, it was obvious to see that it was heavily dipping in frame rate and frame times were rapidly increasing just while turning the camera. Having tested many games before, I know to label this as an issue and not expected behavior. Here we are in an empty desert with barely anything, yet just turning the camera is causing quite intense, rapid variations in frame time, and it's making a sinusoidal frame rate graph. Usually that's a problem. With VRR, it looks like the game is slowing down when the camera turns each time. Here's where I discovered something unique. Slowly panning the camera creates a very different performance experience even though you're looking at the exact same things. With the camera moving slowly, frame times are normalized. The frame rate graph is not showing that sinusoidal behavior even over an extended period of time. If I were to overlay the average frame time of slowly turning the camera, represented by a red line here on the bottom right frame time graph while moving the camera quickly, you can see that turning the camera at a faster speed produces excessively long frame times that go below that line. So for some reason when turning the camera quicker, the game runs quite a lot worse. Having diagnosed things like this before, sometimes this can mean an occlusion culling issue with slower CPUs. But that is not the case here, as I'm testing the game on a Ryzen 7 9800X3D, the fastest CPU on the market for gaming. The other time I've seen an issue like this before is when a game does something less than optimal when streaming things onto the GPU. And in Monster Hunter this seems especially problematic, as even when using the patently hideous low texture setting, this issue still remains. Textures are blown up pixelated messes, yet something streaming related is causing the GPU to dip here extremely just while moving the camera. And I'm not even turning the camera particularly fast here with heightened sensitivity. This is normal camera turning. Perhaps the issue is the RTX 4060 here. Not really. Even on an RTX 4070, we see similar behavior, just lessened in absolute numbers due to having more GPU grunt. There's still a sinusoidal frame rate graph when turning the camera, and frame times that increase in a strange way. Here's where I have to start theorizing. It's not the CPU, and it's somehow related to the GPU. I cannot be 100% positive as to why this is occurring, but if I were to hazard a guess, I think I'm seeing behavior related to direct storage decompression. Going into the game files, one can find direct storage DLLs, which make me think the following is happening. As we can see here with the texture set to low in the menu, there's a lot of VRAM headroom free even on an 8GB GPU. The in-game VRAM meter says that, and measurements from other programs like Catframe X or RTSS confirm this. In spite of that large amount of VRAM headroom, the game for some reason is potentially still streaming things in and maybe decompressing the textures in an unnecessarily aggressive manner just by doing simple things like turning the camera. And maybe that GPU compute load is too much for GPUs like the RTX 4060, which shows then wild swings in performance when just turning the camera. But it is more reasonable on a larger GPU like the RTX 4070, which has a lot more compute, and that happens to show less frame time variance while doing this. That is just a theory, of course, and I can't prove it at the moment, but the measured behavior is the most important thing. Any lower end GPU like the RTX 4060 will have this extreme performance dipping when just moving the camera around. As a result, I cannot recommend playing this game on GPUs of a similar compute level to this one unless you're fine with these big swings in performance for doing something so basic. I measured the same issue on an RTX 2070 Super, I measured the same issue on an AMD RX 5700, and I would say it probably happens on an Intel GPU, but I found that the ARC A770 in this game ran it really poorly. It was around 20 FPS at similar settings as I was testing the other GPUs on. And we know something is obviously not right with the game's texture streaming as on the ARC A770, textures were just not loading in there at all. So something ain't right. Beyond the performance, I currently cannot recommend playing this game to anyone as well with an 8GB GPU, even if it's a bit stronger, like a RTX 3070, as the default high textures are extremely questionable, and the medium textures required to prevent stuttering on an 8GB GPU are just laughable in quality. For higher-end GPUs, I also advise caution. 
When attempting to play the intro of this game on the RTX 4070, it was easy to see stuttering that just happened any time I played that intro, and the game was still using these poor looking high textures. With the very high texture pack that will come out at launch as DLC, the game could potentially run even worse due to this streaming behavior I think I'm measuring. As evidenced by the game's released benchmark, using the highest texture setting in that benchmark adds in many measurable frame time hitches into the game that are just not there with the high setting. Based upon my measurements, I believe that the added in stutters are not coming from running out of VRAM. Rather, they're potentially related to the constant streaming in of textures with their real-time decompression occurring. This doesn't sound great, but like The Last of Us Part 2 at launch or Forspoken at launch, I find this game's basic performance, even in its sparse last generation looking world, extremely questionable. I have no idea why an arid desert with nothing in it is running like this. A lot of games that look better run a lot better. As a result, on a technical level, I disrecommend playing this game on a lower end GPU until it is patched, as I cannot derive optimized settings at the moment without serious concessions to visual quality that just don't make sense. On a higher end GPU, you'll be able to brute force this game's shortcomings to a degree, but I don't think that is praiseworthy. Anyway, that is all I have to say here. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, support on Patreon, and as always, this is Alex, bring you farewell, and auf Wiedersehen!